The original LS50 was conceived to celebrate our 50th anniversary for KEF. The engineers were tasked with creating a speaker that could be a speaker for every man, essentially. We wanted to produce something that looked forward, that celebrated our innovation and technology. I don't think we could have predicted what a classic product it could have become. Now, eight years later, it's time for us to do an upgrade, a new version. And so there's a lot of pressure here, you know, trying to build on something which has such a good reputation is a real challenge. But we have a lot of technology we've developed in the last eight years in UniQ that make it perform even better. And we've got something really new and really interesting for this new product. What's incredible is that the LS50 Meta builds on that original ethos of the LS50. Its sound is remarkable. It's moved it on another step. It's done all the things that we wanted it to do. It's got new materials, it's got new acoustic technologies. It's taken the game forwards. Most of our efforts have been in trying to bring the driver performance up to the best we can deliver. We've refined the motor system to reduce distortion. We've improved the cone performance of the mid-range by having a second generation decoupler. And we've added the tweeter gap damper, which helps to control resonances around the gap of the tweeter. But really, the killer feature is a brand new tweeter absorber. So with the tweeter, we have a chamber behind the tweeter where we try and absorb the sound. But with traditional techniques, not all of it gets absorbed. Some of it bounces back, hits the dome, and that changes the sound that you hear. Traditional ways of doing it rely on fibrous wadding of some kind. Soft materials, foams, damping materials which absorb sound naturally. But with those materials you're very limited by what you can find in uh, natural processes or in, in naturally occurring materials. So if you take a traditional way of doing things with a rear loading tube with some wadding in, then you can absorb around you know, 30 or 40 percent of that rear sound wave at low frequencies. But it's very difficult to go higher than that uh, because you have very limited space. If you want to go higher than that you have to have something which is extremely large and you just can't fit in the product. We've been looking into uh, an area of research called metamaterials. So there is a clear distinction between material and metamaterial. A material has properties guided by nature, and a metamaterial, we create the properties we want. So the challenge is how can we absorb the sound in a very compact device? Is to use sub wavelength resonators. The thing with resonators is it works only in a very small bandwidth, a specific frequency. So the challenge is how to have broadband resonators, how to create a material that can absorb 99% of the energy in a very wide band, is to have multi-resonators equally spaced. So this is where metamaterial comes in. We developed a metamaterial with 30 tubes, 30 channels, and it's like a maze, but each channel is tuned to a specific frequency and we cover the full bandwidth. So the benefit of a resonator like the one we use is once the sound is inside the resonator, it can't escape and is completely absorbed in the resonator. For the LS50 Meta, we actually teamed up with a third-party technology company who's a specialist in metamaterials for acoustic noise control. And it was a collaborative project with them to develop the absorber we're using. We also had to rearrange the structure of the driver to fit everything in and also make sure as much of the sound from the back of the driver hit the metamaterial as possible. But inside the LS50 Meta driver, we have a very large venting tube that leads through the driver to the metamaterial at the back, which consists of 30 tubes, all optimized in shape and size, so they fit in a compact disc. And this disc absorbs almost 100% of sound from 600 hertz up to above 40 kilohertz. And just like the original LS50, we wanted to adhere to the design direction that we'd put in place. So we wanted to retain some of that physicality of that speaker. It was very unique in terms of its physical appearance and it had a huge sound for such a small box. So the performance, the acoustic performance of that product was very high. If you take what we've done, there's a huge amount of improvement in that driver. And each of the individual things may not seem that significant. Small changes here and there to improve little aspects of the performance we weren't happy with. But when you add them all up, it makes a big difference. 
When we had the first prototype up and running and we started working on the crossover, we really couldn't believe how much of a step forwards it was. So have we improved on a classic? Yeah, I really think we have. I hope this product can live up to the expectations of its predecessor.